What is good? What's going on, everyone? Everybody, this is the Attack in Third, and of course, with a fresh new face to the show. That's right, special edition, special host of the house, my man Ty Lewis. Ty, what's good, everyone? Hey, uh, thanks so much, Pat, for having me on the show, and uh, looking forward to talking Union Soccer. So, like you said, uh, new face, first time being on the show. So, looking forward to this. Yeah, yeah, listen, I've had plenty of guests on here. I've had the the, the uh, guys of the Jose Nunez of the world, the the uh, Miguel Cabrera's, all those guys. And I've had a lot of fun. Uh, Skyler's, you know, he does a phenomenal job. And uh, you're, you are the newest face. You know, again, I picked these guys right out of that press box. So, uh, you know, I bring on the most knowledgeable guys because I'm the, probably the least knowledgeable person in that room. Uh, just if you could tell by the questions I asked Jim Curtin. So, but anyway, without further shadow to do, let's have some fun here. And let, <laughs> uh oh, speaking of, there, he, there is the man right there, the Todd Father. Listen, that guy, he he pretty much runs that that press box right there. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, the Don in the press box. Yeah, he <laughs> he is the Don of the press box. Uh, but he he cracks me up though. He he's a fun guy. Uh, we love we love Jose, but listen, let's get right in it with Todd. You know, three games in, and yet we don't have a W or an L. Again, another day, another. We just went in doubt, just drawled out. I mean, what can you take so far? What did you first of all? What was your impression of Saturday's game? Yeah, I mean, uh, first half was good. Second half, not so much, right? I mean, uh, thankfully the Union were able to get an equalizer. And, you know, I think if you look at the season as a whole, if we want to talk about the MLS season in general, the Union, like you said, have three draws, but all those games, they were down in, in well, except for the uh, Austin game, you know, they were leading blew it, and then they found a way to draw again. So, I mean, that's positive, right? It's like, okay, the game against Chicago, the game against Sporting Kansas City, which I don't think the Union should have got a point. I think we, we could all agree that with referees mm -hmm. that actually know how to do their jobs, that throw in that one off of Mikau Uwa where the referee said, oh, it's a Union ball. Yeah, I, I think the Union wouldn't have got a point in Sporting Kansas City, but that's neither here or there. But you, you're, you're seeing this team fight back. I mean, same thing down in uh, Costa Rica against Saprissa. The the Union go down because of that own goal by Jacob Glesner. So you, you, you're seeing the fight of this team. Where okay, we're conceding first, which Jim Carton says all the time. We're a team that's not built to play from behind, and, and it's true, right? But you're seeing the fight from this team, and so yes, yeah. it was disappointing this past weekend in Austin for the Union to go into the half up one nil. They haven't led at all this season in all the competitions, and you, you kind of felt like it was a missed opportunity, right? The Union had a couple chances there yeah. with Carranza. Kai Wagner had a chance with the volley towards the end of the first half, couldn't put it on target. Um, it was really disappointing that the Union didn't get a second goal, but you're like, okay, well, the Union are winning thanks to a penalty kick by Daniel Gazdag. And then the second half, I mean, I mean, it's 56 through 58th. I mean, I, when the mm -hmm. Union there's two goals, and even before that, I don't think the Union started the half all that great. And you felt like, okay, a, a goal is coming for Austin, but then to see a, like a second goal two minutes after the first one, it's like, whoa, this went from bad to worse really, really quickly. And uh, thankfully, the union showed that fight, like we just talked about, that they've shown that, hey, we have the character to still get back into this game. And uh, Mikhail Uwa came up with his third game tying goal of the season. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Big Al, who who runs, he is the uh, the grand poop of Edge of Philly Sports, says, welcome to the show, Todd. Uh, Todd looking sharp in that kit from Kyle. Absolutely. Todd, Todd's a fresh. Yeah, listen, he keeps it fresh. Uh, but listen, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, you know, again, you know, I so I try and look at big picture with this team. Is it fatigue that's kind of wearing in because of all the tournament play? Um, you know, is it because of the road travel and all those intangibles kind of mixed in with this team? And why aren't they, you know, giving you a full you know, the full 60 of good soccer, you know I mean? Why aren't they putting a complete game together? Why aren't they finishing down the net? And, and you know, and I just, you know, try and, you know, take it. And plus, you know, now, you know, not trying to look, jump a little ahead, but, you know, what Jim Curran's going to be shorthanded, eight guys. Uh, now he's really going to have to get creative against that, you know, Portland team and try, you know, make some adjustments and all those things. So, 
But when I, you know, when I looked at Saturday's game, and again, like you said, you know, Gaza gets, you know, get, get, kind of got things going with the free kick. And then, you know, and that's when things kind of got sloppy. I mean, two minutes within that from, like you said, that 56 to that 58th minute, uh, within two minutes of each other, I mean, Austin just kind of, Austin FC kind of just found its way to, uh, you know, make things happen, you know. Um, you know, just kind of, you know, you know, that Diego Rubio goal, you know, he kind of, you know, beats Chris, you know, Chris Elliott off of it. Uh, the John Gallagher goal, again, just for for him to get that set but way across the other side where he could, again, find the back of the net. I don't know if there's a, a discommunication between Andre Blake and the defense and some front of him. I don't know if there's just tired legs. I, I don't know. I cannot make any more excuses for this team, though. I mean, Again, are they losing? No, but everything's trying to start to like pan out. We want to see the W's, of course. You, I, the whole press box, we hear the sons of Ben, ben yelling it. Please give us three points. And I don't know. Uh, obviously, they're not doing it. And of course, we've talked about the off season too. If you know, you're really not. You only made some minor moves. What you need is a playmaker. Um, and of course, everyone knows it's no secret. Miami's brought in the, probably the biggest playmaker, uh, but just give us a little something, you know? So, I mean, do you worry about, you know, the defense kind of, you know, or are you, are you worried more worried about of all these tournament plays that's kind of just wearing this team out, you know, right from the jump? Well, the, the, the good thing is, right. I mean, the union had one less competition to worry about after getting blown out by Pachuca six nil. And I mean, yeah, the, it sucks because you wanted the union to go far. And I think the union had an opportunity to go far in that competition. And yes, they took care of business at home against Pachuca, not giving up that all important away goal. But you know, there was missed opportunities against Pachuca, three really good chances. You had chances by Mikel Ua, by Daniel Gaza, could have put the ball in the back of the net. And I feel like that was a story a lot last season as well as like the union are creating chances. They're just not finishing off plays. And we've seen it early on this season. And mm -hmm. the, the good thing is it's early on in the season. So it's yeah. not time to panic yet, but I, I, I do worry defensively about this team a little bit. Three goals. They gave up against Chicago. They gave up three goals against Saprissa. They gave up six goals against Pachuca. They gave up two goals against Austin. And th this isn't typical of this team to give up that many goals. All right, if the Union give up a goal, that so be it. But to give up two-plus goals, three-plus goals, it's a little bit concerning. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, I mean, you, you talk about Jack Elliott just getting beat by Diego Rubio for that first goal. As a defender, I, I know the, the ball played in by Jimenez, took a deflection off of Jack McGlynn, and maybe mm -hmm. that, that threw off the defending a little bit by Lowe and Jack Elliott. But still, as a defender, you, you can't let an attacker sneak in behind you and, and beat you to that ball to get ahead to the ball. Jack Elliott's like the tallest player on this team. You, you got to stick a foot out there. You got to head that ball away. And he does nothing. I mean, just mm -hmm. really uncharacteristic. Damian Lowe, I, I said this in my goals breakdown video. It's like you want your two center backs playing side by side. Damian Lowe on that play was further ahead than uh, Jack Elliott. And, and if Damian Lowe's a little bit further back because Damian Lowe throws a foot at that ball, he probably does clear that ball away if he's a little bit farther back instead of push farther up. The, the second goal that Austin scores, Kai Wagner gets beat over on the sideline and Owen Wolf's now free running towards the 18-yard box. Mm -hmm. And I, I would take it a little bit farther back like I did in my video where I think that whole play when it started, it was a 3v2 on the sideline. You need Daniel Gosling to push the ball. Instead, you leave Jack McGlynn and Kai Wagner in a 2v3 situation. And of course, I mean, the attackers are usually going to win that nine out of 10 times. And that's exactly what happens there. Kai Wagner tries to recover, but Owen Wolf gets the best of him. And then you have Jose Martinez, who's at the top of the 18 yard box going towards Owen Wolf. You have Damian Lowe going towards Owen Wolf. So you have two defenders on one guy. And now you're like Jim Curtin said, you're scrambling in the box that pulls Quinn Sullivan out of formation where he's mm -hmm. the one who should be on John Gallagher. But because Jose Martinez left Alexander ring in the center of the field, now Quinn has to shift there, and now you have a mismatch. Now you have unmarked players, and so it, it's these little mistakes that Jim Curtin said. You know, the good thing is these are correctable mistakes. 
but we've seen them yeah. pretty much every single game this season so far. And it's like, when are these problems going to get fixed? Again, going back, it's early in the season, but still you, you, you panic a little, little bit because this team's built on defense. And so far we haven't seen defense from this team. Yeah. And listen, I, I, I agree with you. I mean, the defense has been lackluster and there's no secret about it. Uh, Kyle first checking against most goals in the franchise, franchise history over seven games, uh, goals conceded. He said, so, yeah, well, like, you, you you, just, you kind of now it's spot on. And like I said, once the tournament, you know, games start to come around, again, like, home over, you got excited, yada, yada, yada. But still, it just even out to. The lack of the lack of better, better terms are there. Uh, again, what happened was the lack of better, better tournament. Like when I saw the Comic KF tournament, it just told me I'm like, this team's going to get worn out again. And again, have those you know, talks with Bedoya. And I asked him. I said even last year, that tail end of playing two to three games a week, I said, Is, are you worried about fatigue? You know, catching up with you guys. And he said, yeah. You know, the fatigue and injuries, yeah, are going to equal out to being tired. So, um, and that's what I saw here. Now all of a sudden. Uh, you're kind of getting those, you know, a lot of games. You're getting, you know, the, and you're asking a lot. And again, uh, and I do like, you know, some of the, the matchups that Jim tries to bring, you know, you know a, a spark and Bedoya off the bench and try and give the rah-rah and try and get the team going and try and keep that uh, offense going. But like you said, the, the worst part is the defense and uh, the miscommunication. Sometimes you see a Damian Lowe get frustrated on the on the field. You know, you see those things. So um, I don't know how that team's going to answer. Um, you know, like I said, come Saturday, it's being shorthanded eight players. Yeah, I mean, if you want to, we can get into that. I mean, it's a little bit of a concern that the Union are missing so many players. But, I mean, just going back mm -hmm. to, like, the, the Austin game, and, I mean, just the season overall, Kyra brought up the stat, most goals given up in seven games in franchise history, which is – concerning when you look at the earlier union teams some of those teams were god awful and so to see a, a team this talented give up this many goals through seven games yeah it's 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 a little bit of concern but again i'll i'll, I'll keep repeating myself that it's early in the season and you yeah. know jim Curtin it's said it the last couple of years you know you can't really judge teams until 10 games into the season and so we're what approaching the fourth game this weekend for the union mls play eighth overall and so I, I think it's a little bit too unfair to judge what happens this weekend because you said eight players are going to be missing. Damian Lowe, uh, Andre Blake, who are playing right now against the U.S. I believe that game is tied 1-1. Corey Burke, people mm -hmm. texting me, uh, scored an own goal. So uh, you hate to see it, but you also love to see it uh, if you're a fan of the USA. But um, mm -hmm. Jose Martinez, Jesus Bueno, both out with Venezuela. Ty Baribo out with Israel. Daniel Gazag out with Hungary. And then the two homegrowns, Jack McGlynn and Nate Harrell with the U23s. So, I mean, mm -hmm. U.S. I mean, the Union are missing a lot of key players. And uh, I was listening to MLS, this is MLS, which is uh, an, a new Apple show, where they were talking mm -hmm. about, you know, this is eerie similar to what happened in 2021 when the Union were missing 11 players due to that COVID outbreak against New York City. And the more yeah. I thought about it, I'm like, that's a spot on comparison, really. And nobody thought the Union were going to be in that game against New York City. And don't, don't forget, the Union were actually winning in that game 1-0 thanks to an own goal by New York City. And it looked like the Union were about to pull it off. But again, uh, a couple defensive mislaps. Olivier Baizo gives up an issue, uh, a goal. And by the way, Olivier Baizo is playing against Portland this weekend 100% with no Nate Harriel. You know, nice. It it's going to be, I, I think, a lot of fans that are going to buy way too much into, oh, the Union the union looked horrible against Portland. But it's like, can, can you really judge it with this many players no. out? And, yeah, I mean, there, there's three players for uh, Portland that are going to be out, the goalkeeper, um, and then yeah. the two center backs are going to be out as well. I mean, definitely not as many players as the Union, but th this team still has quality. You, you have Carranza, you have Ua up top. I'd imagine Bedoya is going to get a start. I think 
Jeremy Raffanello probably fills in there at the number 10 role. Uh, people are like, okay, who do you play as the eight? I, I think Matt, Matt Real honestly gets a start in this game. You know, Jim Curtin mentioned a couple weeks ago that, yeah, people are going to have to play at a position. And we've seen Matt Real play as an eight before. I'd be curious. So would Jim play him as that six? Because we saw Bedoya play against Pachuca as a six, and he did not look good. He was really, really slow. We've seen Jack Elliott play as a six before. Which again, you know, he he didn't look great there either. But again, I mean, you're going to have players. Jack Elliott, Jacob Glesson, your, your two center backs are going to be available. Kai Wagner, Olivier Baiser, who started multiple games for the Union. We've seen Oliver Zemla a couple times this season earlier than I think the Union would have thought because of an injury mm-hmm. to Andre Blake. But right. you do have key pieces here against Portland and game changers. Julian Cronzo on his own can change a game. We saw what happened down against the priest mm-hmm. when he scored the hat trick. So it's not like the union are going in here with a whole bunch of nobodies. There's still key pieces in this team. Yeah. Well, Ty, you know, it's, it's funny. You brought up a name and it's, you know, he's been a little bit surprising people because he is fine in the back of that. What can you take you away from Ua so far? I mean, like you said, it's very early, but in the small sample size that we've got from Ua, we should all be happy. I mean, compared to what we've gotten down the stretch from last year. So, uh, is this a good start for Ua? Yeah, I mean, he has three game, uh, goals, and like I said, I mean, he has three game tying goals. And so, I was joking with Kyle. I was like, "Can we say <laughs> Mikhail Ua is clutch now?" Um, I mean, people love the dog on him, and I, I think it, it's unfair. And I get it, right? I mean, he's the most expensive player in club history. You're, you're paying him the most money out of anybody on the team. And you expect those kind of guys to score goals, which is Mm -hmm. fair. I totally get it. You know, that's what you pay strikers for, to score goals. But I pay attention to what he does off the ball, stretching the field. And there was moments last year where he's making the right runs and his teammates aren't finding him. And so I'm seeing a little bit of that too this season. I mean, look at his stats against Austin. I think he had only 18 touches. He's a player that doesn't get on the ball a lot. And, you know, maybe that plays into effect to to his game to an extent that, you know, they're just not linking up with him enough. Um, But look, when you give him a chance, he's the most clinical finisher on this team. And he has been for the last couple of years. Yeah, he doesn't get a lot of chances, but usually when he does, I mean, he's putting shots on target, got two shots against Austin, and one of their shots was a goal. And so I I think it's it's a good sign that Mikel has three goals early on in the season, three and seven in all competitions. And so... Um, I, I do think that the, the, the judgment by fans is a little bit harsh. And I, again, I'll, I'll repeat myself that I know the, the job of the striker is to score goals. Is he doing that as much as fans want? No, absolutely not. Like I'm not naive. I, I, I know that he's not scoring as much as the union would probably want him to be scoring or, or fans too. But look, you mm-hmm. know, I, I don't think anybody was expecting him to be a Luis Suarez or a Yakamakis down in Atlanta right. or a Cucho Hernandez. No, I, I think he's a, a solid player. I, I don't think he's a world beater at all, but can you argue anybody on that team's a world beater? No, I, I think Jim Curtin no. says it all the time that, you know, a group of 11 beats any individual player. And so I, I think that's clear as day. You know, you buy these players that buy into that mentality, buy into that style of play. Like, hey, look, you might be talented, but if we're going to win, if we're going to get you goals, you got to buy into this pressing mindset, which we saw against Austin, in which we haven't seen the Union press that well. The front three was pressing excellently uh, against Austin, especially in the first half. And then the second half, you know, maybe tired legs, like you said, uh, a slow start, and Austin takes advantage of that. But no, no, no concern from me whatsoever with uh, Mikael Ua. So, and there's a couple of times, like I went over a few times watching him play this year and the two goals he did get prior to this game. Uh, oh man. Uh, the two games he got, the two goals he got prior to this game, he got like, if you watch it in, in slow-mo, like he gets himself open. He's creating space. Uh, there's times where, where he's trying to find himself. He, he, the one, um, uh, was it like a couple of weeks ago and not against Chicago was it against Chicago or Kansas City but you see him like he breaks away the goal and he goes around and gets himself wide open for a two-piece goal and it was beautiful um again he he's beaten sometimes he'll one up beating the one-on-one coverage coming down the stretch uh there's things he does on the field that's getting himself open and you saw this last game 
you know, he, he kind of gets the like the read deflect, the read deflect, and uh, the offensive rebound, and he finds the back of the net, and that's all you need him to do. Again, like you said, he's going to be the the whipping boy for the fans because he makes the most cash, and the minute you know something goes wrong, there and you know, especially if he has a nothing on the scoreboard the, the fingers get pointed his way immediately so and i get it we we've seen it with a lot of sports teams around here there's always a whipping boy unfortunately he's going to be that because he makes the most cash but however with him producing and if you get carranza start to you know pick up things you know this team could be dangerous and like you said it's just very early into the season we're heck we're still getting cold weather here so we till the weather breaks a little bit when the weather starts breaking the, the team i think is going to start really breaking loose and, and finding goals so um you yeah, listen i'm still being optimistic about this team i get it look they're not losing though so there's no l's on it they're still somehow getting a point it's just not the three points that you know a lot of fans are looking for so uh, let me take a quick time out. We're going to take a, a quick ad, look at some of the sponsors, and then we'll get right back talking about this upcoming Portland team. And we're going to go down the X's and O's. And Todd, I'm going to figure out what do you think of X's and O's moving forward? Can we get our first W of the season? So give me a quick commercial break right here as I break. All right, guys, let's talk about Terry Law Firm. If you get hurt at work in a motor vehicle accident, personal injury, or affected by criminal law, you got to call David R. Cherry of the Cherry Firm. Call 610-565-0300 or go to cherryinjurylaw.com. Let David R. Cherry fight for your rights. Again, that number is 610-565-0300. That's 610-565-0300 or go to cherryinjurylaw.com. Let David R. Cherry fight for your rights. All right, guys, that was David R. Cherry. Guys, if you need David R. Cherry, hit him up today. Uh, so, Todd, I'm going to go right into it. Uh, Portland made a move yesterday, signed Anthony Santos, a goal scorer, um, a winger. They're, they're, bring, they're trying to bring up some offense to try and get their team going. They just took an L from Houston. Uh, it, it looks like, they, again, a, so far, a little bit of a good start for them. I mean, other than the loss they just took from Houston, uh, they're two and one. Um, Exit and O's. How can we win against this Portland team? Yeah. So I think uh, one correction: the, the player you're thinking of is uh, Cabasito, Jonathan Rodriguez from uh, Club America. That's a player. Yeah, yeah, signed. that's it. Yeah, uh, Anthony. They they signed in August of 2023. But right, the X's right. and O's. Um, you know, it's interesting because the Union have had success the last couple of years playing in Portland, which is not an easy place to go and play. Uh, funny enough, I think it was Sergio Santos's last game with the Union, and uh, he scored in that game against Portland. I, I don't have the stats of Kyle still in here. I'm sure he'll pull it up or, mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll look it up here in a second. But, um, you know. Uh, it's going to be interesting because you lose Jack McGlynn, who's been a big creator of the team this season. You still have Kai Wagner, who was your highest chance creator last year. He has been for the last couple of seasons. So it's not like you're not going to have chances being created. Quinn Sullivan somehow wasn't caught up to the U23s, and he's been creating a ton of chances this year for the Union. Olivier Beiser is an attacking player on the right-hand side for the Union in that right-back role. He'll create chances for you. So it's not like they don't have chance creators against important and so if the union can create those chances if they can finish off plays why not i mean we saw the union this past weekend out shoot austin which is not typical for a team on the road you know you, you expect those teams to sit back a little bit and to mm -hmm. hit on the counterattack, which the union are very well capable of doing and so i think if the union can create chances and then finish off those uh there's chances that maybe Kai Wagner creates, Quinn Sullivan creates. I think they're fine. Um, defensively, you want to see them just be a little bit better. Anthony uh, Anthony has three goals on the season for Portland. It's definitely been one of the most promising players. Uh, Cabasito, who they just signed from Club America. I don't think he'll play this weekend. Uh, it's just, you know, trying to throw him in there to train with a new team, get acclimated to new weather and whatnot, new players. Yeah, I think it's too much of an ask. But, I mean, this Portland team's been surprising in my opinion under phil neville who's coming over from inter miami they, they had mm -hmm. that come from behind victory against new york city 
away with Anthony scoring in that game and then Ferreira scoring in the 97th minute. Uh, you had the 4-1 win against Colorado Rapids in their home opener. So, I mean, this is a team that, like you said, is coming off of a loss, but two wins on the season, a draw against D.C. United down in D.C. Oh, sorry, um, at home against D.C. I mean, th- this is a team that I think feels confident coming into this game, especially when they look on the side where the Union are going to be missing some key players. Uh, th- of course, they're playing at home, Portland, and they're going to fancy their chances. But you know, if the Union can just be sound defensively and you know finish off those chances, I, th- I think they're going to be... They'll be fine in this game. And uh, one thing that the Union did last time out in 2022 against Portland, they stretched to the field with Sergio Santos. They hit on the counterattack. And so, Mikael Ua, you know, you get him doing that, stretching this defense. This team is not great defensively. If you can get that going with Mikael Ua, I mean, would I be shocked to see the Union come away with a 1 2 1 victory? N- no. But I also want to be shocked if the Union lose this game. I, I think if you're a Union fan, you would take a draw this weekend. But uh, again, with missing Andre Blake, a huge player for you, missing Jack McGlynn, Nate Harriel, those are key players that you're missing for sure. But, uh, you know, just finish off your chances. I, I feel like it's something so simple. But, you know, one goal. I mean, we saw what happened against Austin, right? You know, they started pushing players forward, and that plays into the Union's hand. You know, if you can... Hit on the counterattack. This team's built to hit on the counterattack. Then more chances are going to come your way. So um, finish off your chances. Again, I, I know we talked about it. The Union should have had multiple goals in the first half against Austin. But uh, you, you can't make those same mistakes. You can't go behind early against Portland. I, even though you've shown a, f- a willingness to, hey, look, continue fighting until the end. Hey, look, we can grind out a result and uh, come from behind. So s- strong defensively. You know, the center back pairing creating chances and I, I think the union will be fine. Yeah, well I, I agree with you. I think you mentioned offensively, I think this team can hang with anybody. And, and when you face them against this Portland team, like you say you're talking about stretching the defense. And, and that's something even Quinn Solving can do. He can stretch a defense and like you get that pairing of him and Ua and then you you know you can cause some havoc down below. And that's like you said, it's just all about the finish for them. And then uh, if the defense, it will, what could be alarming? Now, like I said, it's going to be interesting to see what what moving pieces that Jim Curran has in store uh, to try and make up for the players that he's going to be missing. So it's going to, like I said, it's going to be really interesting. Um, here goes a couple questions. First of all, my man Luke Greco checking in. He goes, what's up, Goller? What's up? Uh, Daniel Barrett checking in. He goes, yo. He always says that. And then he leaves. And then Kyle checks in. He goes, Unit last five uh, versus Portland, three, three, zero, and two losses. Uh, Union have won three, three of the last games up there. Yeah. And then he goes, Luke Rocco saying, how many, uh, he asked, how many players are we missing? I think it was eight. Eight. If I'm yeah. not, eight. And then he goes, uh, we're missing a uh, low also. Yeah. Lowe's, like I said, that's another big body that we're going to be missing. Anthony, uh, angry Anthony saying, hey, guys, what's up? And then, of course, uh, Lewis, uh, uh, oh, he's talking about Lou. Ta- talking to Lou, Lou, between you, you two, and the first team, 10 players total. Uh, yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like I said, that's it's going to be interesting how Jim Curtin comes up with some schemes. What's he going to do? What's the best available? I mean, are you a fan of the 4 4 3 defense, uh, in, you know, formations, or you want to see, you know, something else? Yeah, I don't think the Union are going to play 4-4-3. I don't think they have the personnel to play that. I mean, mm. I wouldn't be surprised if the Union play a 4-4-2 diamond. I mean, it's their base formation. Uh, like I was saying earlier, I would not be shocked if you put Matt Real there in the midfield. I, I think personally what Jim Curtin is going to go with is Ua and Kranza up top, Jer- Jeremy Raffanello as the 10. Uh, you have two eights, Matt Real and Quinn Sullivan on the outsides. Uh, Bedoya as your loon six, and then Wagner... Elliot Glesnes and Vizo as your defenders, and then Oliver Zemla in goal. So I think that's probably the best team Jim Curtin can get on the field. Yes, you're playing Matt Real out of position there in the midfield, but we've seen him play there before. Um, I, I don't think this team's great if you put Jack Elliott as a six, and then you put Bodoria a little bit further up as the eight. Uh, again, we talked about it that Bodoria didn't look great as an eight against Pachuca, but when you're missing a Jack McGlynn, in the midfield, yeah. uh, Jose Martinez in the midfield, or Jesus Bueno in the midfield. It's kind of hard to, you know, 
get your best midfield in there. So of course you got to move some pieces around. You got to play players out of position where they don't normally play. But um, I, I do feel confident that's what Jim Curtin's going to do. And yeah, I've seen some people say that uh, Saunders, Nagbo can and Gabo can go and play for this team. Yes, they signed him in the offseason from Denmark, I believe it was. He played over the weekend with Union too. But you know, this is a really, really raw kid. And I think, again, just we've seen Jim Curtin play Matt Real in the midfield before. And I think he trusts Matt Real in the midfield over a Saunders or a Nick Pariano, who they just signed this past offseason to a homegrown contract. Uh, it sucks that they don't have no Leon Flock because he's out injured with that peck. Yeah. He'll be out for another month, two months. And so I think you feel a lot different about the midfield if Leon Flock's there, because if he's here, then you slot him in as the defensive midfielder, and then you can play Bedoya up further. You don't have to worry about playing Matt Real in the midfield, but I, I do feel confident that's what Jim Curtin's going to go with this weekend. Hopefully he doesn't overthink it. I mean, I've seen some people say, well, you can play Kai Wagner as a center back, and you can play Jack Elliott in the midfield and play Matt Real in his more natural left back position. I, I don't think, I really don't think Jim Curtin and his coaching staff are going to overthink it that much. No, it's funny because when you said about current overthinking, uh, Guy Russell, my main man, Gus, uh, would always say, I don't know why Curtin's overthinking these lines. I don't understand. And he would go, he would go nuts talking about uh, current overthinking. It, it would it'd be great. Um, but like you said, though, at least like it should be basic formation. Again, uh, I, I, if you had a take for a player of the game, who's going to be your surprise player of the game? Mm, that's a good question. Surprise player. So I don't think Kai Wagner would surprise anybody if he has a good game. So I won't say Kai. Um, can we go, Mikel? Ua? Can we go, Mikel? Because it yeah. seems like this fan base is just you know so down on him. So can, can we go him? Even though, like I said, he has three game tying goals this season. So I don't think that's too much yeah. of a surprise. But yeah, let's go, Mikel Ua. Let's go, Mikel Ua with with a goal and an assist. I'll I'll say he gets an assist this weekend. So I like and it. And if that happens, if that happens, uh, people. We'll, we'll definitely lose their mind on social media. And I'm sure we won't see people say he's back, but that would be great for his confidence. It definitely would be great for his confidence. No, you idiot, angry Anthony. This ain't a soccer shirt. It's Polo, you idiot. Uh, yes, I call him idiot because he's he always makes fun of me all the time. Uh, it's good. Uh, he goes, Kyle says yes. And then he, he goes, Ty, you just jinxed it. <laughs> oh, God. Kyle says, you jinxed it. Uh, but listen, man, it's 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 He's a, thinking uh, the same thing, by the way. Oh, is he? Yes, yeah, yes, okay. Yes. So that's so uh but yeah, I, I definitely think Uwa could be a sneakily I say Papa Bedoya finds a back in that gets it. He's gonna be he'll be the finish. He's gonna be the finish. I think Uwa, Uwa gets you on the scoreboard. I think like just the two one, it feels about right. A two one win from the uh, the union, uh, and I think Uwa kind of finished it off and builds that confidence coming home uh, against that Minnesota team, that tough Minnesota team that's come out of nowhere with three W's. Uh, who would have thought? Um, let me go though. I, I, of course, I like to add as my guess out of market games. What game are you looking towards to watch this weekend other than, obviously, Portland and Philly? Man, so I can't say Portland and Philly. Man, man, man. Um, <laughs> yes. I feel like, you know, if you ask anybody this, everybody's going to say Miami, right? Because, oh, it's, yeah. it's Miami, but no no, no Messi. Uh, Suarez there? I don't know. Did he get called up to Uruguay? Maybe. I'm not sure. Um, Cincinnati, New York City could be an interesting game. New York City hasn't got off to the greatest start. Uh, Cincinnati's always a fun team to watch. Um, but I don't know. I think, you know, Columbus is another really good team to watch. I'm always intrigued with watching Colorado Rapids game, especially with their new head coach, uh, Chris Armas. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what's he building out there in Colorado with a whole bunch of ex-United States players and Mihailovic and Zach Steffen and Sam Vines? Um I'll, I'll go with, you know, Cincinnati, New York City is the, the one that I said. I'll, I'll be curious after Cincinnati gets dumped out of the CONCACAF Champions League by Monterey, how do they uh, bounce back now in league's play? Kind of like the Union. How do the Union bounce back going forward after getting bounced by Pachuca? 
Yes, yes, and that's going to be that's going to be the you know we want to see if they're going to be able to make some noise. Uh, this, like I said, getting bounced by Pachuca. Luke Rocco says uh, score off the, uh, score off the sets with Jake Elliott, and then of course uh, Anthony says, "Pet, I can see the Flyers game. I'm blinded by that ugly T-shirt." Oh, shut up, angry Anthony, you idiot! <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it's it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. It's you know, I think. You know, like I said, to me, like I when I looked at the schedule, I try not to go to that Miami game, but dot 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 Miami in New York uh, should be a fun one to watch. If I had a circle one to watch, other than this Philly game, uh, so well, that's going to be you know, like I said, that's that's it for me. Um, again, it's going to be a late game, ten thirty, uh, late start times. Um, How do you get yourself to stay up for those late games? You know what? They invented this thing called uh, monsters, and uh, that's what I, I usually run off of uh, until until midnight. So uh, yeah, it, it's 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 going to be tiresome, and then I have to get up early to do another pod. So yeah, it's 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 wild. But you know what? When you're diehard about this sport and you really enjoy what the, you know, just the ML soccer who what provides, uh, I, I enjoy it. So, but anyway. Uh, Todd, I want to say thanks for hopping on with us. Uh, this has you know, been a great episode. And again, uh, guys, follow Todd. Todd, where, where can the people find you at? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Free Kick Pod. If you want to follow me personally, it's uh, it's a Todd's Life. And then I think it's <laughs> it's a Todd's Life underscore on Instagram. I don't use Instagram all that much. I mean, Twitter is where I'm most active. Uh, check out the podcast, The Free Kick, wherever you get your podcast. Uh, the YouTube account where I do goals breakdowns, uh, youtube.com slash free kick pod. So I'll break down whether or not uh, the union score goals or not. So if it's a nil nil game, now I'll break down saves, defensive efforts, shots created. So I have a lot of fun making those videos on YouTube, breaking down how I see the game. And uh, fans seem to really enjoy that kind of content. So uh, that's everywhere you can find me. And then my Substack page while I write or just leave all my content. Uh, there it's uh, the free kick dot substack dot com. So, uh, Pat, thank you so much for having me on the podcast and talking union soccer. It's always fun. And, um, you know, I know, you know, the Austin game wasn't a lot to talk about, but, you know, it, it's only in the season. And so I would say, you know, fans that are down on this team, don't be down yet. You know, if you want to worry in a couple weeks, maybe after the Nashville game or a little bit. After that, then maybe we can panic. But, you know, the, this Portland game, whether, whatever happens, happens. Because the Union are missing key players in Nate Harriel, Jack and Glenn, Andre Blake. And I'm not trying to make Daniel Gazdag. I'm not trying in Jose Martinez. So, yeah, they're missing a lot of key players. So I'm not trying to make excuses for this team if it goes to hell this weekend. But, look, uh, the world's not ending if the Union lose to Portland this weekend. That's my point. Like, you know, th- this team will be fine. You said it after they come back from Portland. They'll be at home against Minnesota. And it's crazy, too, when you look. The Union haven't really been home. I mean, can we count that Seattle game as being home? They play for five minutes, and then that was it. Yes. They go down to Pachuca. They go to Austin. Now they go out even farther west to Portland. And so it's, it's a tough road schedule. And so as much as it sucks that the Union got knocked out of the CONCACAF Champions League, I mean, man, this team's so unchanged from the last year. A lot of tired bodies. Only a month off in the off season. It's not enough time to recover your bodies. You have players that are dealing with injuries from last season, still trying to get over those injuries. And so, you know, yeah, it sucks that the Union out of Concaf Champions League. But now that you can go back to playing one game a week instead of a Wednesday Saturday schedule, two games a week, I, I think that's what this team needs. As much as we want to see them go far in the Concaf Champions League, um, for this team to go far in the MLS Cup. I think we got to see them play as little games as possible. You, you know what? You, you're absolutely right. Like, uh, no, Anthony, I'm not going to stay up and eat pasta. That's only on Sundays, pal. Uh, no, uh, I, I think with me, though, like, I thought this team would definitely would have responded better. Like you said, you dropped a touchdown uh, literally by Pachuca. And then with the rain out, I'm like, okay, fine. You know, this kind of buys you a little bit of time. Uh, however, like I said, I, I still only got a draw out of this team. And like I said, it's this team has just been on the road. I mean, you go from Mexico, you go to Austin FC. Now you have to 
you go home for a little bit to practice and then all of a sudden you're back on an airplane flying northwest to go get ready for portland so i mean this team hasn't really settled in into really uh stay home and practice a little bit so um but it's going to be curious to see what happens out there and what moving pieces. And maybe Jim kind of discovers something. Maybe, uh, like I said, maybe it goes with the diamond formation. And maybe he just goes, you know what? I should have used that this entire time. Maybe I'm, I'm maybe I'm missing something. Uh, so it's going to be curious. And uh, like I said, if, again, the bright spot about this offense is the, you know, it was starting to find the back of the net early. Uh, you have Quentin Sullivan, who who's stretching that defense, you know, with his speed. Uh, if he became a little bit of a better ball handler, I think he'll be he's going to be just fine. Uh, if you you know maybe just get a Karan's and more into a rhythm. Uh, a Gazag, I mean, last year he was more of a facilitator, but now he's starting to find the back of that. So you get those guys starting to click click, and then you know the world's ours. You know, what I mean, it's just like you said, the, the alarming part is has been the communication for me. Between Andre Blake and the defense, I mean, sometimes it looks all out of sorts. I don't know uh, when they, you know, you get back on defense, it kind of looks like they're uh, all out of sorts, and it looks like this is where the opposing, you know, picks their spots and knows what they want to do. So you have to play better defense, and uh, and I think sometimes Andre needs to be play a little better. And I know that's like unwarranty to say that, uh, but I think you know, Andre needs to be a little better himself between the pipes. Yeah, yeah. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens this weekend in Portland. Yeah, we'll definitely see what happens. But look, uh, guys, give Todd a follow, guys. I mean, uh, he is the Todd father, as our man Jose said. He is the Todd father. I mean, uh, always great to see him. And, you know, I see him front row hanging out. I mean, you got you, my friend, have the perfect seat in the house. I mean, you have it front right there. Uh, as soon as you get in, I mean, you got you got the spot. Uh, I you know I, I'm on the second row. I kind of earn my uh, spot, you know, when, whoever's got that next to the bean pole, you are considered what I call a rookie. Uh, anyway, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, but anyway, listen guys, I, I want to say again, Todd, thank you so much again, Todd, you're always, like I said, whoever comes on the show, uh, as you see here in the background, it's pretty much right next to where we sit at anyway, but anyways, who's in that press box, always more than welcome to hop on with me, uh, anytime. So, if you want to get something off your chest, you want to talk about you know, good, bad, whatever, always more welcome here. Guys, especially, guys, give Todd one more time. Todd Lewis a follow. Give his YouTube page a follow. Great stuff, always. Uh, Todd, thank you so much. For me, Todd, we'll keep you guys updated. And go Union. Fine, let's get that W. All right, guys, we are out of here. <laughs>